What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists as we continue our live coverage of East Tech 2025. And right now I'm joined by my friend Walter. Walter. How are you doing? Thank you very much for having us. No problem. What's new in the world of SMW Auto Block? Well, we're here today. We're, uh, sh we're uh, showing our showcase of our zero point system for changing out fixtures and work holding off of CNC machines, three axis, five axis, VTLs, so on and so forth. We also have some of our automation devices that we're showing off with our Cinegrip inserts. Um, this equipment allows you to utilize your manufacturing technology skills and change out fixtures very rapidly and uh, get your machines up and running with more spindle time. Now I see a lot of people really like these center grip inserts. What makes them so different than anything else out there? Well, we don't have to dovetail. We don't have to crimp the part. We can take the material right from the saw and clamp it right in the center grip and machine 90% of your parts sticking up in the air. 90%? 90% of your part can be up in the air being mm -hmm. machined. And when you say you don't have to stamp these, that means that those bite just with a vice twist. Like you don't need to lean on Whether you're using thing. a power vice or a manual vice, it, it embeds and impregnates into the part and forges a pocket, allowing you to clamp on less of the material and machine more of the material up in the up, up past the vice. And what are these red ones back here? These red ones are pocket protectors. So if you're not using that reverse jaw, you can put the pocket oh. protectors in and stop the chips and stuff from going into your I've your always holes. seen that and I always wondered. Yeah, there, a lot of people think they're smooth clamping inserts, but they're pocket protectors. And when we're talking about the zero point system, what's the repeatability on something like this? Uh, five, micro, uh, fifth, five micron. Five micron. So literally you could be popping these on and off all day. Yeah, two tenths for people that use inch. Your repeatability is going to be out of this world. Yes. So if you could take a fixture on and off your machine and not have to indicate it every time, that's the key to the whole production. And I take it these are also, because I see this as... Um... So these are pneumatically operated by air, but they're mechanically clamped. So we use air to open them and turbo for extra clamping space. But while they're in your machine, there's no air trapped in this mechanism, so you don't need constant air to use these. So these are also then very well set up for automation. Automation, we can do automation, manual changes, uh, CMM. You can take your part from the machine tool back into the CMM and check it without having to unclamp it. So you get high tolerance work, aerospace, mold work, that type of stuff. <clears throat> when you build a fixture array, you could kind of standardize all your machines. All the different models of machines could have a standard platform versus right now all your tables are different. That's what I was kind of thinking. I think most people don't put one of these in there and call it a day. No, They're normally they have babies shop. in shops. When we, <laughs> when we have put one in one machine, they go to the next machine right away. Fair enough. Now, you guys have a lot of stuff here, so I want to make sure I see some of it. What do we got on this table over here? We're showcasing some of our different vices for five-axis work, plus our new plus five quick change zero-point manual system. We have a 52 and a 96. We have double clamp plates. We have all kinds of different stuff for indexers, risers, everything you can imagine for a five-axis machine, and we keep adding to the catalog as we invent more stuff. And do you guys see that as kind of where SMW Autoblock is headed right now, really heavy into the Everything is going to multi-axis machines. I mean, the average three-axis machine is the thing of the past now. If you could do your part in two operations, then three or four, why wouldn't you buy a five-axis machine? Makes a lot of sense. Now, for a vice like this, is this actually a five-axis vice? Because that's a very large platform. This is a, this is a five-axis vice. We actually have the zero-point system in the bottom, plus the plus the manual zero point plus five, so we can use APS, or we can use zero point. All of our vices are through the industry standards. They'll connect to anybody's zero point or plus five type apparatus, 52 and 96. And we also specialize to make our matching 200 millimeter spaces for the larger vices. And I'm taking that if you wanted to, so if I wanted to build a fixture plate, I could probably buy these from you guys, stick them on there, and they would be cross compatible without, you know, let's say I have half my jobs running vices, the rest run on fixture plates. I could use those same we teach, as it we were. teach the end user on how to use this stuff. We supply step files. If we want us to make the top fixture plates, we will. Otherwise, I can teach them how to use it in all the two positions of all of our fixtures, and they can buy pins and do their own fixtures, whether it's zero point or plus five. And as someone who doesn't do a lot of five axis stuff, which means I don't do five axis stuff, when we're talking about things like risers, what's the purpose of those in an application? The risers are on a five axis machine, tilts the table 90 degrees, say that's the worst condition or past 90. The headstock comes down and the work holding is not, too close to the table. The spindle head hits the table. And so now we have to rise it up. Not all jobs have that option. If the part's super tall and you're not tilting at 90 degrees, you can get around the part. Um, but if you're after you have to go around the part at 90, 90, 90 on an angle, you need to rise the part up and down. And the zero point allows you to add risers at any time by just adding a riser to it. Right, so you're off two or you're off three, whatever You can raise and lower it very fast with a quick change device. Makes sense Whether it be zero point or plus five. Now, what are we looking at down here? You guys have too much on display here. 
And I mean that in the best way possible. Okay, this is our Cinegrip kit. This is what our salesmen carry around to explain how Cinegrip works. We have uh, different materials in here, all the different brands, uh, the inserts that we use and how they're used in our vices. If you wanted to buy these inserts and buy a cutting tool, you can make your own uh, oh. clamping jaws in your own vice if you want to. And am I interpreting this correctly, that that's at 50 to 55 Rockwell? So we can do aluminum, soft steel up to uh, eight, uh, 49 Rockwell, and then after that we use a different insert for the different hardened materials. But you can still, that's still fighting so, into that. Yeah, so some stainless, some wasp line, no, Inconel, they're all uh, aerospace components. They still need to have an insert that works in it. Jeez. The inserts are all the same carbide grade, they just have different patterns in them. So different points where that pressure is actually right, being applied. Right, how it applies to the material, because each material has a tensile strength you're dealing with. Makes sense. Correct. You've done this once or twice before, haven't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> What do we got here? So this is one of our five axis vices that have a unique pattern at the top. This is for clamping uneven parts or round parts on a five axis vice. These jaws actually come with this vice, but this is an option to buy these. These are clamping inserts. You can have a pivoting jaw oh. and a fixed jaw. So you can clamp a round part or say like a connecting rod or a pump housing or anything that's non-conventional shape that a two jaw clamp can't handle. This can be done with two swiveling, two fixed, one in the middle, double clamp, anything like that, or a round part that comes from the lathe to put holes in it. So now you don't have to change your vise to a chuck to put a round part on your mill. Which is super handy. Yes, it saves a lot of time and setup time. And of course, you can put those same center grips in with this setup, therefore you're biting it as hard as possible. Yes, and we have these serrated or smooth inserts that raise and lower the part, however oh, you want to use it. Oh, I see. And each one of these locations give you a different location for a different diameter. Oh, so I can pop these off and pop them into any of these yeah, locations? Yeah, these are just cover holes again to stop from just the chips. Plugs. What kind of industries are you seeing really utilize this a lot? Anybody that has a five axis machine that's tired of changing out the work holding because they just have the vice bolted to the table, this does a flame cut part, this will yeah. do a water jet cut part, it'll do an odd shape part. Um, it does all kinds of different stuff for you. Especially a flame cut, that would bite in real well. Yeah, and you can even make your own grippers and stuff for it. We've had other people do some crazy stuff. And I'm sure if you wanted to, you could run multiples on here if you have a really wonky shaped part. Right. Huh. Moving down here. This is something I haven't seen before. What am I looking at that's on a chuck like this? So this is a, a two jaw TS chuck. We sell them in two jaw and three jaw and also six jaws. This is a pull down chuck. This was developed for a special um, a part that had to be pulled down against the datum. So both these jaws rock in and pull down and at the last minute pull it against the datum. Oh. So this is for high production, automotive, shaft work, um, making air conditioner parts, that type where it's repetitive all day long in the same machine. We make different sets of jaws for pulling down the parts in different locators. We can even put a mandrel in the middle for centralizing the part and clamp it, say clamp on the outside, depending on what version of chuck you have. So since you're pulling that down on the datum, I'm guessing that this is for work also where that length is super critical because yes. you have a firm stop that is pulling against. So Whether it's a any... center, a firm stop, a locator, air sensing, whatever you need for your automation or for mass production. This chuck is not one that you put on your machine for a job shop. This is for a dedicated part. A machine is going to run the same set of parts or a family of parts over and over again, nonstop for years. 24 hours a day. And this, this is our this is our steady rest. Yeah, it looks like a steady rest to me. So we sell a lot of these steady rests in conjunction with the shaft jobs that we do. We have a this is our mini, so it's easier to lug around to the shows. But we go up to all the way up to a 6.5. We do cam shafts, regular shafts, following steady rest, dual steady rest, everything that compensates the chuck on the long part that may bow in the middle when you're machining it. And this here, this is probably not one that you're going to be able to buy off the shelf. This one here is, a, is actually very good. It replaces all the standard three-jaw wedge hook chucks that come from the machine tool vendors. Like, we sell the same chucks. It's, um, so this is a quick change chuck. It allows you to change the jaws in and out without having to recut the jaws every time. On a serrated jaw chuck, intrametric, you have to cut the jaws every time yep. you put them back on. This is more of a quick change counter centrifugal chuck. It has the bars that run across the face that can't move out. So the clamp force you start with at static is the same clamp force you get at rotation when it was very little, like 15, 20%, depending on the size of the chuck. Jeez. You can set up a library of jaws, and instead of taking 30 to 40 minutes to set up your next chuck jaw, it takes minutes. Just swap them you out the Change them in go. and out, and you make a library of jaws for whatever parts you're making in your job shop or production shop, and you can cover a wide range of parts on here. It's funny, because you guys have such specialized, specialized solutions. You know, we got two of them on the same table that this is for the company that wants to make a million of something repetitive. You also have the stuff that's flexible for job shops. For one or two pieces or thousand piece run. It kind of covers the gamut of what's right. out there. 
Because job sites can do small to medium and large batch parts depending on what their mix, uh, mix of customers are. Right. So if you have a machine that's sitting there set up with one of these on there, it doesn't make any money because you don't have any more parts. Right. This allows you to make different parts. I like they all it. both have different properties, but there's a reason why in machine tool land for everything. Exactly. It kind of depends what you're aiming for and you know what your part mix is. Yeah, we, we've recently come out with a Tobler quick change unit. So if you want to change from a chuck to a collet to a mandrel, we can adapt that to your machine and change out chucks very easily. All on the same All base, All on the same base, right. If people want to find out more about this, that, and everything we covered, where can they go? SMWAutoBlock.com. And of course, you can come check them out live here at ESEC 2025. So you guys will be here all week. All the way till Thursday night. Till Stop in, down. ask for Walter. And of course, make sure you guys stay tuned as we continue our live coverage of ESEC 2025. Walter, thank you very much for having us.